Thank you very much. I was just trying to throw some, some questions and some statement before, because most of the discussion has been covered by Olaf, start from Olivier and ended by yourself. Nothing left is for somebody like me to maneuver or to have a space. The big giants started to discuss things, and the little ones like me struggling as a local organization to get some space for myself. Religion is a universal teaching of God. Our humanitarian message should be universal. Not sectarian, not political, not to divide the community, not personal. So we should not change our religion into culture or sects or individualism or vested interests of some religious leaders or at the end of the day, conversion, a conversion of people to our religion, whether this religion is Islam, which I'm talking about, or others. This is very, very important. We have more outreach and congregation than anybody else on earth, even governments. So this is the strength of the faith-based organization or the religious organizations. A big ask, is faith dividing or uniting? I think by the statement of Michelle this morning, when he said that 25 uh, workshops have been done to discuss or the uh, uh, global, uh, uh, what do you call it, development goals, uh, what the SDG. SDG, SDG, and none of them have been uh, managed or uh, led by faith-based groups. That means that actually you are a faith-based group on this side and the other people on this side. So are we using faith to divide our humanitarian movement or not? And this big ask has to go to the UN because this was a UN meeting. Okay? Why you distinct between those and those? None of us can live without having a faith, even if we are secular or atheist. This is a faith. And we can challenge this as well. So this is uh, just to start he heating up, huh? <laughs> the word phobia is not only for Islam. It's for all religions. So I have to be very careful that actually religions, people become very, very phobic. When we talk about religion, when we talk about faith, this is very, very serious in the international community and amongst government leaders and amongst politicians and others. We are very proud to be a public civil servant, accountable to our beneficiaries, accountable to the public, accountable to our donors, and accountable to our government, as well as accountable to our Lord. And this is the difference between us and others. We should be very proud of this. We should not actually uh, uh, be ashamed or shy of being accountable to God, to God, because he is the one who created all of us. We, as religious institutions, are civil society organizations. Mosques, churches, synagogues, and temples are civil society organizations. And this is something for the UN to consider. We are not just to be dumped at actually uh, a side discussion. No. Any religious institution is a part of the civilian movement of any country, and it is a civil society organization. And this is our right. And we have a, a unique role to play, which has been mentioned by most of our colleagues, or my colleagues uh, this morning, and earlier on. Uh, let me talk about, uh, what's word number two? Olivier was, uh, was writing my speech. I don't know what did he put it. <laughs> number two, challenge or threats. But our threats is politicization of faith is a big threat. Religions, aid,